In the second part of this video course, we are going to take a look at building out a front-end UI to consume our data coming from Strapi. And as mentioned in the beginning, we're going to be using Next.js. Now, Next.js, as you can see, is a React framework for production. So essentially, it's a React-based framework that we can utilize to consume our data, to do server-side rendering, to do all sorts of interesting things like root prefetching and creating file-based routing. And it's a really, really great uh, framework, especially if you are developing applications in the Gemstack. Now, Next.js is offered by Vercel, and Vercel is also going to be our go-to deployment platform, at least as long as the UI is concerned. I highly recommend that you visit the Next.js documentation, which you can find on nextjs.org. There's all sorts of interesting showcases, documentation, analytics, and examples that you can read through. As I said, as part of this course, we're not going to have a very low level introduction to Next.js purely because I've done that in a previous course, but instead we're just going to focus on the main building blocks to creating the application that you saw me demo at the very beginning of the course. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with Next.js. The very first thing that we're going to do is, of course, create an application using the Create Next App CLI tool. And very similar to how we use this with Strapi, I'm just going to type in MPX and then create dash next dash app. And again, at latest. Now, if you want to start your project with TypeScript, you could do dash dash TypeScript, but I'm just going to be using JavaScript. So we're not going to be using TypeScript for the purposes of this project, but just so that you know, you can do that as well. All right, so I'm going to hit enter. And we are, of course, prompted for this question. Are we sure we want to proceed? Yes. So let's give our project a name. And I'm just going to call this maybe Films UI. And automatically, this CLI tool is going to install the required dependencies, which is, of course, going to be React, React DOM, and then the next package as well. So let's wait for this installation to complete. Once the installation has completed, you see that we again get a bunch of commands that we can run, such as npm run dev, build, and start. But again, we need to make sure that we CD into the right folder. So I'm going to CD into Films UI, and then I'm going to in fact, as opposed to starting it from here, from the command prompt, I'm going to open my code editor. And once my code editor is open, I am going to walk you through these folders and then start up the project. So very briefly, what we have here are node modules, which are, of course, the install dependencies. Then we have pages in here. Now, these pages folder basically allow Next.js to do what is called a file system-based routing. And again, more information can be found about this in a previous video course. But very simply put, every single JavaScript file that you have in here, which also equals to probably a React component, like in this case, we have the home component here. So every single JavaScript file that you place into this folder under the pages folder is going to be its own root. So now if I create an about.js file and I say something like const about, and then this is now going to be just returning an h1 and let's just say this is the about page and then do an export default of about what this will do it will enable the slash about root in my application and of course if i put a folder in here then that folder structure is also going to be taken into consideration for next JS when building out the roots and it's completely automatic. Now you do see this underscore app.js file as well, which is you could think of this, you know, as, as the main sort of root component and then all the other components would be passed to this my app. So if you want to make some changes, um, maybe you want to, you know, add or, or import a, a style sheet that's going to be global again, then you can do it here. If you want to modify 
how my app looks like or you know add another component or wrap this around uh, a react context then this is the place where you would be doing that now we also have the public folder which just has you know an svg now and a fev icon we're going to leave that as it is and i'm, I'm sorry i forgot to mention that under the pages folder we also have an api folder uh, which does contain serverless functions so in this case there is a sample handler function which is basically going to uh, return that name uh, return this object with the name property uh, with a value of John Doe and it's going to return a HTTP code of 200 so you can place uh, you know serverless functions into this API um, folder then we have the styles so we have some styles per module so we have of course a home page we can have a, a style for that particular page or we can have globals which are going to be applicable to every single part of your Next.js application essentially. And so we're going to add Tailwind CSS to this project uh, fairly soon. Then we have a bunch of configuration files like an eslint rc.json with some lint settings, git ignore, package.json, readme, so on and so forth. But we also have this next.config.js, which is the, you know, the, the one configuration file that we have for Next.js and this is the place where you could sort of fine-tune how Next uh, is operating. We're not going to be touching this for the purposes of this course. Okay, so that's our initial setup. So let's open the terminal and run npn run dev, which is going to fire up a server on localhost 3000 so we can open up our browser and just navigate to localhost 3000 and this is the page that we get welcome to next.js and it basically provides us with a bunch of links to the documentation and examples and deploying this project and if you go to slash about remember we set up this route and now we get that this is the about page so in fact we are now verifying that we have added a route to the application and that it in fact takes the file based um, structure or the file structure that we have here into consideration so in the next video what we'll do we're going to install tailwind css for this particular project because that's the css framework that i picked to use and then we're going to start by creating the layout for our application